For Inside Carolina, I'm Taylor Vipolis, and this is the Insider Rundown, where I'll cover what I'm hearing when it comes to UNC football. Kickoff to the 2023 season is quickly approaching, and with uncertainty at the receiver position, I'm expecting to see an increased role for Kobe Pesor as Carolina puts the final touches on their preparation for South Carolina. In the three games that he started in the slot last year, replacing Josh Downs, Pesor averaged 87.6 receiving yards per game. In all the other games combined, he had just 60 total yards, yet in his small sample sizes, he's shown to be a more than capable option. You saw flashes of Drake May showing his trust in the young receiver as he proved to be a reliable catcher of the football with only one drop in 39 targets and shifted gears with fluidity to create that separation from defenders. Carolina was active in the transfer portal at receiver in the offseason, but to leave Charlotte with a win, the Tar Heels will be counting on a big effort from Pesor. Additionally, looking at things that UNC can do offensively to exploit a South Carolina defense that returns a mere four starters from a unit that was already in the bottom half of the country in both scoring and total defense is look to get multiple tight ends involved early and often. With John Copenhaver, Kamari Morales, and Bryson Nesbitt, that group is loaded with potential. New offensive coordinator Chip Lindsey can get creative with personnel groupings. You have 12 personnel with two tight ends, or get crazy and go big with 13 personnel with all three of them on the field at once. If it's your most talented position group, you find ways to get them on the field. UNC's tight ends also have the versatility with Copenhaver emerging as a starter this training camp, Morales' ability as a red zone threat, and Nesbitt's gift of size and speed to flex him outside or in the slot. While South Carolina's defense wasn't good, the UNC defense was even worse. I'm told that Carolina's defense is itching to get out there on Saturday to prove that's not who they are. He wasn't a part of that unit last year. However, he's also got something to prove moving up a level. Watch out for East Tennessee State transfer cornerback Elijah Huzzy, who could see time at nickel early. An FCS All-American, Huzzy displays exceptional ball skills evident by his six interceptions last season and has been the talk of camp for the Tar Heels. That type of talent is desperately needed for a UNC defense that forced less than a turnover per game. Last year, they weren't good at anything, and a small way at improvement would be to have something, anything, they can hang their hat on like creating takeaways to get Drake May back on the field. This South Carolina team is a vulnerable one, and their coach Shane Beamer said something along the lines that he's been disappointed that during this game week, his team hasn't had the physical mindset and urgency they need to have to beat UNC. A source I spoke to who attended a separate practice for the Gamecocks echoed a similar sentiment that it was one of the worst practices he's ever been to with how undisciplined they looked. Both teams enter Saturday with major question marks, which is why they play the game. Looking forward to being in Bank of America for it, and hope to see you there. In the meantime, stay tuned to Inside Carolina for all the latest coverage leading up to the game.